slightly different video today. I'm going to cover a chair. Hello, it's Icy. That's right. Uh, a while ago, three, four, six months ago, something like that, I found this rather wonderful vintage chair in a thrift shop for $35 and naturally I purchased said chair. Um, I can't identify how old it is. I think it's probably maybe, I don't know, 1930s to 1950s, um, something like that. It has been recovered but you can feel the original horse hair sort of uh, structure and horse hair and sprung uh, underneath. It's in really good condition. Um, the, and you can hear, you, you won't be able to hear, but I can hear <laughs> the crinkling sort of sound of the horse hair. I tried to identify when they stopped using horse hair in Australia for um, chairs. And I think probably the 1950s is like the end, the end limit. I think I tried to look at, you know, like identifying like the foot shape and that kind of thing. So maybe 30s. Anyway, it's lovely. Uh, it's in good condition. Uh, it's very comfortable to sit in. Uh, and the color is so not <laughs> anything that works in this house. Just like, no, no. Um, I don't know how it's going to come across on the camera. It's looking fairly accurate. So it's sort of a, a goldy, limey, greeny thingy uh, in a like a velour. The velour is fine, um, but I really, really, really don't like the color. So what's the plan? It, it pretty much needs no real work. Um, I think it's not... It was probably not particularly expensive when it was bought because these turn sections are actually quite rough. Um, so it's not, it, it may have been just a quick restore, like a, a quick sort of sand back and recoat, but I don't think it needs anything serious particularly. So uh, what the plan is, is I'm not going to fully recover it. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna make a cover that goes over top and then fastens underneath. Um, I'm not necessarily a hundred, like I, this is a really lovely chair. I like it a lot. I don't want to like pull it apart and wreck it. Um, and then I don't want to have to pay somebody to fix my mistakes. <laughs> so we're going to do this in a very low impact way as far as we can go. Okay. So I have purchased the material. Admittedly, I purchased this a little while ago. So this is a rather good kind of, I don't know how this is going to show up on camera, um, a, a really nice kind of magenta, sort of like got um, black and magenta sort of flecked weave. I think it's coming up orangey on camera, but no, it's a, it's a nice, not overly cool fabric. Uh, so it should work quite well in between like the cool grays I've got up here but the other warmer colors I've got in the rest of the house as well. Now this was uh, it's just standard furnishing fabric from Spotlight in Australia and it was uh, on a 50% sale so um, so I think I think I got a meter so it probably cost me about $15 roughly something like that I think so so the plan is if I do this So you can get a get a vibe and, and that looks or it will look <laughs> really good so what the the general plan is is i'm going to literally measure the actual um, chair and then i'm going to cut sections out of this sew them together and then just like pull it down um obviously i can't i'll need to have some way i might fasten it or i might hand sew the sections together at the back of the um behind the arm and then yeah have big sections that kind of fasten underneath which obviously don't need to be in the red um in the red slash magenta now this on its own is fine but quite boring and 
uh, I am not doing boring anymore. <laughs> so, what I've got is uh, a thrifted, well, part of the lining's already been uh, chomped by Miss Icy, part of a lace thrifted dress. Um, so, it's quite cool and she she got it to make some stuff out of has used some of it and used the lining and then given the rest back to me going uh, and I've gone okay thanks and chucked it on the chair and gone oh oh no wait wait what do I have here so if I do this Now that's a vibe. Um, I really like that. The magenta and orange complement each other. They're like opposites on the color wheel. Um, I've got enough here I can do other, other trim with, but I think I'm gonna be restrained. <laughs> Watch me being restrained. So I think probably what I'm gonna do is maybe, I think, I think it should be wide enough. I think I can do sort of the side panel here in orange as well and then that's it so just having like a swoop across the back it'll still be underlined in the magenta and it's just going to have the orange over top as as like a feature now i think that should look quite good vaguely victorian uh but i think it should be um like it should work if i decide i want to put this chair like in the, the, the main part of the house or something, as opposed to my special chair I sit in under the window with the, with the tall lamp and do my unpicking because, you know, there's always a lot of unpicking to do. It's good, good lighting. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that's the plan. Um, basically, I have covered one chair before, actually, and using the same material. I think it's the same material actually, uh, bought at a different time. So I have, I have done once before and done like a sewn thing that then got attached on. So, uh, so we see how we go. Hopefully this will work. Um, yeah. And I, I would just like for this chair to be just not sitting in the corner, either green or just having a piece of fabric draped over it while I had to think about what kind of <laughs> vibe I wanted. So this is the plan. Uh, and there might be some other bits and pieces in this video uh, of things Mr. Icy has made. And let's see how we go. Okay, so as a quick aside, I've done some measurements and I think I'm going to make this in two parts. Um, B mainly because I don't want to like take the existing cover off and find out terrible surprises. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a section that goes over the seat. So this is all one piece. There's no seams along here. Um, I think I'm still want to add seams on the side anyway, so I can add the lace section, but we'll see. It could just, I could just stitch it on rather than making a full seam. So this is all one piece. Uh, and this is tucked around in the leg here and tucked under. Uh, and then it appears to wrap around the back, though obviously that's covered by the back. So I think what I can do is make a piece like this that wraps around underneath and around the back and just sort of attaches in place with buttons. I could stitch it there. I don't know. We'll see. Then, um, because this, this seat section here goes in quite deep as well, so I can have it like tuck all the way down here, which I think was good. Then we'll make another section that drops over the top, uh, fitted on the top section to the top of the um, arms, and then we'll have another section. So and I think I'm going to do almost the same thing where probably maybe the back section drops underneath and then I have a section that wraps around and buttons at the back um, or actually no 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 what I might do <laughs> I'm just working this out as I go actually no so yeah it will attach around underneath and button at the back 
and then the back flap will come down and wrap underneath and the front section will attach to the back section underneath. I think that should work. Um, yeah, I think I think that should I think that should be okay. I'm just thinking it out in my head logically. Yeah, yeah, I think that, I think I think that should probably work. Okay, uh, yeah. So I think we'll try that. So I'm gonna make yeah a seat section and a back section. If that works, I mean, there's nothing stopping me making like separate ones that I can drop on at later stages if I want to if I want to change up like the design which is fun um yeah okay I think that should be okay uh, the the other thing that means is I don't need to use the maroon fabric for everything I can just use some sort of plain heavy duty black um for the under section uh where it won't be seen we'll, we'll see what happens so let's try that was a good project. It did not take too long, for which I am extremely happy, uh, and gave me a very, very satisfying result. Um, I do love this chair and have loved it since I purchased it some months ago. <laughs> and I still haven't looked up how long ago it was. Um, so it's super comfy. Best spot to do my unpicking with the lamp here. Um, and I'm so happy with the result for the covering. So uh, really satisfying use of like, like the, the, what is this lace? Just lines up perfectly along here. Um, the lace across the back, though I am forever going to be annoyed by this, uh, like not being even. I swear I checked that. So I will live with this being uneven until such time as I decide, oh no, I'm gonna spend hours unpicking this and then resewing it because I would need to, I think I would need to like literally disassemble the whole thing. I don't think there's any fast way of just like doing it because it's all cross stitched on here and stuff to like super secure it. So I don't know. Maybe I will always have some sort of small drape over the top and I will pretend that this problem does not exist as, as we do, you know. Um, so as I showed you in the reveal, of course, I have two other pieces of additional furniture as well made by Mr. Icy. One is this really cute little side table. 
uh, which is beautifully Art Deco vibed. Uh, the brass here at the bottom was my suggestion. <laughs> um, it's got edge banding. So some of the Merbal used in the other project uh, has been like the very, very finest and then steam, steam bent basically and then like attached around the table. It's just the right height to use with this chair. The colors are gorgeous. It's just been, um, this is all side of the road special <laughs> pretty much. Uh, the upright is an old floorboard, um, so yeah, and it's just a uh, oiled, uh, sorry, no, waxed up after being oiled, and it looks gorgeous. And it's nice and solid, but light enough you can pick up with one hand and move around, but also does not, um, even though it's sort of cantilevered, as you see, like it, it basically jumps back into position, and it's the perfect time, just right for a drink. Or a book or the thing that you're in the middle of fixing while you're sewing it's perfect now the other one of course are the drawers that go with my beautiful beautiful sewing table that he made me um, so the drawers as well so just gorgeous and if I bring this out for a closer look which you saw before anyway so yeah, this beautiful inlay across the front here. Um, and then that's all sort of stuck onto the carcass of the drawer itself. So, oh, so nice. And this a little addition of this kind of forged blackened diamond underneath the standard like handles we bought from Bunnings. Just mm, elevates, elevates definitely. The design was mine. Um, and I did a bit of research to see what sort of uh, bedside table slash storage drawers were from sort of the 1920s anyway. And this sort of center opening is really common. Uh, so I very much wanted that because I thought that would be super helpful for like a pair of drawers to go next to the sewing table just to be able to shuffle things away um, and also there's enough room between this bottom shelf underneath the sewing table um, and the top that I can put something on there as well so um, and they're light enough that if I need yeah an extra spot to put something that they can be pulled out into position somewhere um, and then I've got like extra space to put a laptop or uh, something else I'm working on a reference book any of those sorts of things could actually sit on top of these. The wood, uh, the main carcass of the outer section is something that I've forgotten and will put in the text here. Um, and that's from uh, uh, the Among the Trees shop that we got the original um, wardrobe door from um, as well so the trim is Merbau again the same for the sewing table um, but just a different shade which is a shame we couldn't get any more of the pink the pinky orange lighter colored stuff so it's okay it still tones nicely so just in the front of the drawers here this little strip here and the bit across the bottom that's the same as the sewing table so we do call back to that the fronts of the drawers apart from that is some really beautiful wood that Mr. Icy's um, uncles two sets of uncles kind of combined to, to give him um, and it's got this beautiful figuring where it sort of comes in in these beautiful sort of swoop lines sort of mirrored kind of um, on the drawers on the boat so we've got this beautiful kind of vibe going on and they're just so nice um, they're so nice and these very tricky I mean I asked for the impossible and he pretty much delivered these really tricky three-way mitres at the top of each of the corners here um because yeah i i yeah asked for a lot <laughs> basically i asked for a lot so um and this this is all stained as well so this is not normally this color it's usually kind of like a light color with sort of orange stripes um, but staining has given the most perfect matching color palette to the tabletop it's pretty much it's like the same so i am i'm really really happy so my whole little comfy lovely sewing area is uh coming together so well um i actually don't think i've got i'm probably going to cover some more lampshades uh because i did get 
another really cool proper vintage one. Um, so that's the plan at some stage. My one problem is the lampshade here that I spent so long on, like hours and days and like weeks, does not match. <laughs> it doesn't, it's not, mm, it's not, it's not the same vibe anymore. It's not the same, it's not the right vibe. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't match. So I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Am I, am I truly going to recover this? Am I going to move this somewhere else? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, it's now the wrong color. Uh, so, but that's fine. But thank you so much for joining me here on YouTube. I appreciate it. Next video, um, I don't know. Uh, the, I have, I have, in this period of time, I know what I'm making next, but I also don't know uh, what order these videos are going up. So you will just have to watch and see. But um, yeah, really, really happy with how this came together. Extremely pleased. And the fit, the fit is perfect. Um, I'm, I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed. There's a couple of little unpicking and re-sewing sort of spots uh, that I need to do, mainly about this fit here down the sides. But yeah, it didn't, didn't take too long and the, the result is so worth it. I'm so pleased. Uh, but yeah, thank you, as I said, for joining me here on YouTube uh, for all of these little adventures with sewing and sewing rooms and bits and pieces. Uh, you can follow me on uh, socials as well, if that's in, of interest to you, mostly on Threads and Mastodon. Occasionally, I am very bad at posting pictures so sometimes I post good stuff on Instagram and then like large periods where I don't, but I don't know. You know, that's my problem. Um, thank you so much for joining me and I will talk to you next time. Bye.